Hey everybody, I'm Beth Davis and welcome to Teachable Tuesday where we discover God's heart in his word and apply it to our lives. That's what we're about to do right now. Exciting stuff. So grab a Bible and let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Lord, you do all things well. Thank you for how you love us. Thank you for caring for us, Lord, for seeing everything. I pray that you would send your spirit right now uh, to quench us. This longing within us to be close to you, this longing within us for meaning, God, and purpose. I pray for every single person watching, Lord, that they would have an encounter with you, the Holy Spirit, the living God, right now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, think back. What is the best meal you've ever eaten? Do you remember? I remember, and I can't wait to tell you, the best meal I have ever eaten was in Hawaii. And it wasn't at some resort. It wasn't at a Michelin star restaurant. The best meal I have ever eaten was on the beach and it was a hot dog and a Coke. It was truly the most satisfying, thirst quenching meal I had ever consumed. You see, I didn't have anything to eat that morning and then I must have just been the excitement, you know? And then I uh, went out and I was snorkeling in this beautiful cove and discovering all of these like sweet creatures and the sea life and all of the beautiful colors and I just love being in the water. So it's not like I had a watch on me. I was out there for a long time and I had the sunburn on my back to prove it. I was snorkeling all day. And I even came across this uh, giant sea turtle and he would dip all the way down and chew on the algae, chew on the rocks. And I just observed him for what felt like hours. He would come up to the surface and go back down. I didn't even realize that I was hungry. I didn't even know how much time had passed. And then once I got back on the beach, I realized, man, I'm starving and these friends of mine had saved me a hot dog and a Coke. Now, it wasn't even hot, this hot dog. It was more like a lukewarm dog. And it wasn't like the Coke was ice cold and refreshing. No, it was, it was a mediocre meal <laughs> by worldly standards. But my hunger and my thirst was such that it's truly, in my memory, the best meal I've ever eaten. I was so happy and so satisfied. I was no longer hungry, no longer thirsty. And you know, the Lord uses this analogy of hunger, of thirst, because it's one that we can all understand. We can understand it in a physical way, but there's also an interior reality to our souls, a hunger and a thirst in our souls. And maybe you're like me, you're out and about, right? You're doing even good things, ministry, uh, family life, um, volunteering, your work. You're doing all of these good things, but failing to feed, failing to quench that hunger and that thirst within. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Today, I wanna invite you to the wellspring, to be uh, satisfied to satisfy your hunger to satisfy your thirst because friends the only place that your hunger and your thirst will be satisfied is in Jesus Christ there's nothing else that you're pursuing that you're trying nothing else that you're using to satisfy that hunger and thirst that will ever truly feed you that will ever satiate that thirst within and I've tried many of those things, chasing purpose, chasing meaning, uh, chasing uh, that thing, that next thing, right? That's going to dull away the ache. That's going to take the edge off of the thirst. And the 
author of the Psalms, King David, he understood that. So I want to direct you today to Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. That's uh, just verse one. All of that is verse one. So if anybody understands this existential thirst that we all experience, this universal longing, right, for union, for communion, for meaning and purpose, for intimacy, it's King David. My soul thirsts for you. Friend, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I've had this restlessness within me, this irritation, let me let me translate that for you. You are thirsting for God. Your soul is crying out for the living water, the only thing that will ever satisfy that longing. We can, we can deal with it in a thousand different ways, some of them more virtuous than others, but I promise you the only person, the only thing that will ever satisfy and quench that thirst is the living God, the living water, Jesus Christ. The only way to satisfy uh, this thirst that does not go away, right? It's renewed every single day, is to drink from the well that will never run dry, to go to him in prayer. In fact, King David, he explains that to us. He shares that with us. Verse two, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. You see, so often for me, I'm, I'm looking for life. I'm looking for water in lots of different places, right? The first thing is just to recognize that we have a thirst, to acknowledge that that restlessness, that irritation, that longing that we feel is for the living God. It's for something more than Instagram. It's for something more than approval. It's for something more than a romantic relationship or a raise or a bigger house or a vacation that you think you need desperately. There's a deep longing, a, a thirst that will never be quenched outside of the Lord. So David, he becomes aware of that. And I want you right now to just acknowledge, I, I wanna shine a light on your own thirst, your own longing right now. And to realize that that thirst, to understand it's for God. The thirst that you feel is for God. He put that thirst within you to draw you to himself, not to make you miserable, not to have you chase all of these other uh, pleasures and accolades, right? It's always been to draw you to himself. So David becomes aware of this and then he says, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and your glory. So I wanna talk about if you're thirsty, if today you're thirsty and friends, I'm. I'm thirsty, <laughs> I'm thirsty every single day. I wanna remind you today to turn, to look upon the Lord in the sanctuary. Maybe even go to a church and look upon him hanging on the cross, look upon him in the tabernacle, look upon sacred art today, look upon him. Turn your gaze away from all of the other things and people that you think will satisfy and quench your thirst and return your look your gaze to the Lord. Look upon him in the sanctuary. There you'll see, you'll behold his power and his glory. That strength will return to you. That thirst will be satisfied when you realize that God is so much bigger, that he's so much stronger, that he's in control. All things will come back into right order when we just return our gaze, when we look upon him in the sanctuary. And I, I promise you, you will drink from the water that satisfies, the, the living water, right, that flows up within you, you, you will experience the love that never runs dry because his love, friend, his love is better than life. His love is better than anything. So if you're thirsty, I wanna invite you to pray. I wanna invite you to pray today. And I'm gonna give you a couple of ways to pray, a simple formula in the uh, discipline or in the spirituality of St. Ignatius, my spiritual director. 
recently said to me, I want you to pray with some scripture and I want you to follow uh, this formula of St. Ignatius. You know it, right? And I was like, mm, why don't we just, why don't we go over it just in case and I'll just take a few notes. I didn't know. I, I'd been going into prayer and kind of launching into my own thing, right? Following my thirst. Lord, I'm so thirsty for reconciliation. I'm so thirsty for relationship. I'm so thirsty for healing, God. But instead, I'm, I'm directing my thirst for relationship, for mission, for intimacy. I'm directing it all to the Lord. And, and I'm doing that through this very simple, very peaceful formula for prayer. So I want to invite you to, to be like me and to take a few notes. The first step when you come into prayer, daily come into prayer and drink of the Lord. I want you to drink deeply of the Father's love and presence. Did you know that every time you come into prayer, the Lord is already there? He's there, you don't have to summon him, you don't have to say the right thing, you don't have to be in the right headspace, no, he's right there, he's already available to you. Jesus uh, is called Emmanuel, God with us. It's not like he's far away and then you come to prayer and he shows up, no, he is already with us, so drink deeply of that reality. For you that that might be uh, seeing his face in your Christian, your holy imagination. It might be going back to a place of consolation that you've been before with the Lord, a time where you truly felt him present and you enter into that moment again, into that reality. Because prayer, the graces you've received in prayer, the experiences you've had of God, uh, they're a wellspring in and of themselves. So drink deeply of God in those moments. Drink deeply of his presence with you right here and right now. And you might be thinking, I haven't had anything like that, Beth. I haven't had like some overwhelming, supernatural, fireworks kind of experience with God. That's not what I'm talking about. Was there a moment where you felt seen? Was there a time that you were in mass and, and you were just kind of moved by the readings or, or the art or the kindness of a parishioner and you found yourself starting to tear up. Believe me, friend, that was the Lord. That was the Lord appealing to your heart, softening and opening your heart to encounter you. So I wanna put away the idea that drinking deeply of the Lord is only for people who have had these overwhelming, mind-blowing experiences of God. No, it's simply a, an ascent of the will. You're reminding yourself in faith, no, God is here. God is present and I'm gonna drink deeply of that reality. I'm gonna remind myself that you're right here, God. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to try so hard. You're already here. So drink deeply of the Father's love and presence. Second, clear your mind. Now this was very interesting to me when I learned it. I had been coming into prayer trying to clear my mind first and I could spend half the time batting away distractions and uh, items from my to-do list or texts I needed to return, right? No, instead, I wanna invite you to drink deeply and then calm your mind because then you're not alone. You're not trying in your own strength to quiet all of the other images and ideas and voices because you're there with the Lord. So simply peacefully give them to the Lord. Bring anything to him right before his face, his gaze of love fixed on you. Bring that to the Lord. Drink deeply, clear your mind, and then invite the Holy Spirit. I have been loving praying with Our Lady with the Annunciation and inviting the Holy Spirit to overshadow me, to come upon me. It's a little different of a way to invite the Holy Spirit to encounter us, to expect to feel and experience the Holy Spirit by asking us, like he did Our Lady, to overshadow us, right? We wanna make a gift of our lives. We wanna give the Lord our yes, the same way Mary did. So we invite the Holy Spirit. You could simply pray, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're right here. Holy Spirit, overshadow me. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear, eyes to see. There's no perfect formula. We're just remembering again that we are entering into relationship with a living God, the Holy Spirit. 
So we invite him. And then simply we ask for a grace. This has been so fun for me. When I go into prayer, I'm always, um, I'm like digging for graces, right? I'm looking, where, where is the Lord? What are we gonna talk about? Where's my healing? What does God wanna do? What am I working on? But instead to, to just bring before him what I need, God, I, I need to feel loved. Would you grant me the grace to receive your love? God, I'm stressed, I'm anxious. Would you give me the grace to slow down? Do you see what I'm saying? I, I want you to ask for a grace, to ask for what you need because the Lord is not outdone in generosity. He wants to help with all of the things and all of the ways that we long for support and comfort. So ask him for what you need. Drink deeply, clear your mind, invite the Holy Spirit, and ask for the grace. That's a formula for prayer that I've been praying with that's helped me to drink deeply of Jesus Christ. And in fact, that's what Jesus uh, invites us to do in the Gospel of John. Come to me, all of you who are thirsty. Come to me and drink, he says in John 7. Drink of me. So today, let's, let's put aside our pursuit of anything else, right? Getting one more item checked off your to-do list, that's not gonna do it. Uh, getting, uh, getting in that relationship, right? It's not, gonna, it's not gonna satisfy that thirst. No, your thirst can only be met. Your thirst will only be quenched and in fact increased in relationship with the one who thirsts for you. So go today, meet him in prayer every day, drink of him in prayer. You won't be disappointed. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, right now we drink deeply of your love and presence. You're already here. Thank you that you're already here. Not just with me, with every single person watching. You're in every room, in every heart. This isn't just for some people. You want each one of us, you want relationship with each and every one of us. God, we give you all of our distractions, all of our tasks and to-dos, everything that's past and everything that's to come, God, we offer to you. Make an offering right now. Give those things to the Lord. And we invite you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, overshadow us. Help us to give our yes to the Father. And Lord, we thank you that you're so generous, that you have grace available to us today. So in faith, God, because you're a good father, we're going to ask you for what we need. Give us the grace today. Grace of uh, purity. The grace to receive your pure love. The grace to be patient with ourselves, with others. The grace to do our work well and for your glory. Give us the grace, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I forgot to tell you. That little formula, those four steps. Are you feeling the Lord right now? Because I sure am. I'm ready to pray. That's not even the end of it. That's just to get into prayer. So if you've been struggling to get into prayer, even you go to pray and it's just not working. You can't calm down. Use this formula. Use these four steps to drink deeply, uh, to clear your mind, to invite the Holy Spirit, ask for a grace, and then to be calm, to be at peace, and to, to uh, be satisfied in the Lord. So I want to help you get into prayer. I want to help you drink 
from the living water every single day. I'm praying you get to do that today. This wasn't it. This was just the beginning. Spend some time with the Lord today. He will satisfy you. He's the only one who will satisfy you. God bless you, friends. See you next time. Bye.